1999 was the worst year of my life. Um, I was in a job I completely hated. I was $50,000 in debt. And I turned to the internet to try and escape that and try and you know, get out of that situation. But it actually made things worse. At the time, I was living in a one-bedroom apartment um, and I was working a nine-to-five job that was just the pits. You know, I had a real nightmare of a boss. I saw the lights go out in people's eyes, you know, and they were like, I hate this job. It's soul-sapping. It's soul-destroying, but I'm going to stick here because at retirement, I can finally escape, you know, and it'll finally be done. And it's just, it was like a, a prison. And I was like, shit, like, this is not what I was sold on. <laughs> this is not the life that, that I want to live. This is BS. I, it's a nightmare. You know, it's like the Matrix. I was like, I'm stuck in this thing and I hate it. And I'm not going to be one of these guys that just sucks this up and becomes like a cubicle slave for the rest of my life. You know, it was like, I remember speaking to one of my uh, supervisors and he was like, you've just got to suck it up. You know, he's like, I don't like this job either, but I'm just holding on for the next 10 years so that I can retire and do what I like. And I was like, holy shit, like, you're just wiping out 10 years of your life? In like this prison sentence? I was like, there's no way. So I, I had to do something. What I did is I turned to the internet. I got excited. I thought, look, this is the opportunity. Um, this is my chance to, to break through. You know, I was working like 6 p.m. till midnight every day. Monday through Friday and trying to hold down this crappy job just to pay the bills and then every weekend I would just devote every waking hour you know I would wake up and that was it from from wake till sleep every minute of, of every hour of every weekend was spent on this trying to work out how to make money online and I did that um, it almost completely ruined me I mean I, I I lost family members, I lost touch with friends. It would go, you know, days and days where I literally wouldn't go outside. It almost destroyed me because I did that not for a couple of days, not for a couple of weeks, not for a couple of months. I did that for two years <laughs> um, and I didn't make a single penny. It was devastating. And I just wanted to make my parents proud, you know. Uh, both my mum and dad were teachers for a living and one of the very first things they taught me was that you don't quit you know you keep going until it works but it wasn't working it wasn't working I couldn't see a way through after these two painful years debts racking up even higher I just couldn't see a way through it you know and I'd go to a lot of these business networking events just to try and gather as much information I could from, you know, from other people, from people that were successful. I didn't fit in. I felt like a total imposter. Like I was just this little guy, everybody else were these big players, and here I was, you know, going against the odds, trying to make this work. One of these people in this room, it was actually a guy in his 50s, and he was like, I can help you. And I kind of leaned in. I was like, what do you mean? He's like... I'm a marketing expert and we're putting on a seminar in Edinburgh. It's for a long weekend, three days, come down and I'll share everything with you that you need to know to change your business forever. And I was like, okay, I've got to do this. I, I've got to do this. Like, what's, what's the investment? What are we talking? And he hit me with it and basically my stomach fell out of, fell out of my body. He said, it's $10,000. I didn't have $10 to my name. I didn't have that, you know, I didn't have any assets available. I was running into the red. So I was like, well, how quick is it? How quick can I get the money back? How, you know, how quick am I going to get results? Like, you know, what do I have to do with this? How many hours a week do I have to put into it? And I fired all these questions at him, trying to, to get that certainty, you know, that certainty of, of outcome. And he just paused and he looked at me and he said, there are no certainties in life and especially in business. Put his hand on my shoulder and he said, if you turn up and you show up, it will work. It's on me, you know, it's on me. I've got to turn up and I've got to show up and as long as I do the work, 
I'll get there. Because the problem before, why I've been struggling for all those years, I was doing the wrong stuff, right? I wasn't afraid of doing work. I wasn't work shy, I wasn't lazy, and I wasn't stupid. But I was doing the wrong stuff. I said to him, well look, I really want to do this, I have to do this, but I'm going to have to speak to my girlfriend. So I went back to my one bedroom apartment and had probably one of the the defining conversations uh, of my life. It was gut-wrenching, you know, because I could see it from her point of view. She was saying, well, look, we haven't got any money. Who, who is this person? You don't know them. You've tried for two years. Is this even going to work no matter what you do? We're already in, you know, thousands and thousands of pounds of debt. Like, we can't do this. So she said no. Now, I did it anyway. And my wife, she's now my wife, Laura, and we laugh and joke about this now. She said, look, I'm so glad that you did that because if you didn't do that, if you didn't make that decision and take action, we'd have still been in that one bedroom apartment, tens of thousands of dollars in debt, you know? So I took that action, I took that decision and I went down to Edinburgh and it was just, it was incredible. I mean, it changed my life. I remember very clearly one week was a real sort of a breakthrough week where we'd applied a lot of uh, the, the steps in the system. And in the space of one day, we made over $60,000. $60,000. And I remember at the time uh, saying to Laura, I was like, take a picture of me. And I got a whiteboard and I, I, I wrote down how much money we'd made in this first 12 hours, right? It was in the first 12 hours of doing this of implementing this, and I think it was like over $60,000 that we made. Now it went on in that week, and we made over, I think it was like over a quarter of a million dollars in a week. I remember you know, saying to Laura at the time, I was like, that's it, like, we've cracked this. Never again do we have to be in that situation that we were in. But at the same time, uh, in my personal life, uh, my mum's situation had deteriorated. My mum suffered with uh, mental illness, but around that time she was pretty much permanently in, in a mental uh, institution and being able to uh, communicate with her at that point was very, almost impossible. You know, you, you couldn't really make sense of any conversation. It was my dad that, that kind of brought me up in, in you know, um, teenage years, you know, because of mum's situation. So. He was really, you know, my dad was my person, you know, he was uh, looking out for me, taught me a lot of what I know, and um, but I could never get his affection, you know, with, with my dad, it was, he was from a different era, you know, where they don't hug, people don't hug each other, and they don't openly express love or emotion, and obviously I craved all this, and I really wanted to keep on driving forward, you know, because this big breakthrough that, that happened, it didn't quite do it, like I didn't get the recognition for him, which I really was looking for. I just wanted that sense of pride to come back. Yeah, I'm proud of you, Michael, you know, you've done a great job. Like, um, you know, the, you, you've, you've done it, you know? I just wanted that, I wanted that pat on the back and I, and I just didn't get it. So I kept going, right? And I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And, and over the next few years, you know, the business really, uh, really grew. I mean, we, we made millions and millions of dollars and it was a crazy ride, you know, traveling the world, uh, doing TV interviews, publishing books, doing keynote speeches around the world in front of thousands of people. I mean, it was crazy and it was a lot of fun, you know, but I was still kind of yearning and searching for that recognition and that kind of affection from my dad that just never, never seemed to come, you know, but was driving me higher and higher. And then... Um, in 2019, um, totally out of the blue, um, my dad died. He, um, he had a heart attack. And it was, it was totally unexpected, you know, the guy was healthy. He was, uh, you know, energetic, he, he didn't drink, he didn't smoke, and he was 75, you know. Um, it destroyed me. Absolutely destroyed me. Um, sorry. It just destroyed me because, you know, I was working so hard to to achieve this, you know, to, to push that next level. And 
obviously, you know, with my mum's situation, you know, I couldn't really get what I was looking for there. Obviously, now my, my dad had passed away, and it was, it was a lowest of the low. Um, it was a really tough time, and I got disillusioned with, well, what am I doing? What's the point? You know, where am I heading? Um, why am I even doing this anymore? Um, and then 2020 rolled around, which was obviously fun and games for everyone, right? But um, I got COVID, I got long COVID. Uh, I remember going to see um, private doctors that I've got and they showed me my blood under a microscope. Um, and your red blood cells should be nice, round, flat, kind of, I think they call them platelets or something like that. They look like little frisbees, right? That's what they should look like. My blood looked like a car crash. They were all smushed, broken, spiky, misshaped, clumped together, gunk of mess. And that's obviously throughout my entire body. And obviously your red blood cells carry the oxygen, so I couldn't metabolize, I couldn't get energy. So I, I was just wrecked. I, I was a complete ruin. I, I couldn't do anything. I fell into basically depression um, and despair, the business pretty much folded, um, I didn't have any energy or any motivation um, and my body was, was in pieces basically. It took a lot of months to get better but I finally got my energy back and I finally found my purpose again and my purpose, my motivation is beyond me now. It's not about me, it's not about getting recognition. So why am I doing this? I could retire, right? But what I realised is the legacy that I'm leaving for my kids is a lesson legacy, right? It's basically the lesson that just because you get to the top, you don't stop, right? You don't get to the top of the ladder, make millions of dollars, take it home to the bank, invest a bunch, you know, get bunches of properties mortgage free and then just stop, you know, stop contributing, stop helping, stop making a difference in the world. You keep going, even when you've made it. So that's what I'm doing now. I've reached kind of the top of the ladder and obviously the ladder always grows. There's always that next step, but I'm reaching down now. That's my motivation. That's why I'm doing this. To get people out of the situation that I was in as the little guy fighting against the overwhelming odds to try and break through. That's what I'm doing now, right? So that they can achieve the freedom that I've achieved. That's my goal, that's my aspiration. That's why I get up at 5 a.m. in the morning. That's why I'm helping so many people and that's why I'm so passionate about getting this message out there. I'm just like them, you know, I just started out. I was just some guy that didn't know what the heck he was doing, tried and struggled for the longest time and yet here I am. And that's what people need to realize about me as an individual and why I'm doing this because I don't need the money. Looking back, I mean, it all stemmed from that original decision, you know, and what my mentor told me back then, which is turn up, turn up and show up, you know, turn up and take action. That's really all of this success has stemmed from that, you know, turning up and taking action. I want to leave a teaching legacy, you know, for, for my parents, you know, for my dad, because they were teachers, and it's in me, it's in my blood. You know, that, that at heart, that's what I am. I'm a teacher. And I, I'll never stop doing it.